My name is Elias Mutuma, appearing for the County Assembly of Kericho. I have two applications to make on preliminary basis. One, Mr. Speaker, Sir, and Honorable Senators, is that you will notice from the presentations and the charges read that one of our witnesses is a young lady who will be appearing before Senate to testify on instances of sexual exploitation, molestation, to the extent of being forced into anal sex by the governor to protect the integrity of the witness, Mr. Speaker, sir, we have made an application to have this witness protected so that she is not exposed to the world. We have written a letter to the speaker where we have disclosed her true identity, even attached a copy of her ID. We have no problem with the witness being confronted by the governor. So we are requesting the Honorable House to allow that witness to testify in an environment where the world is not watching or where the world is not able to identify who she is. To that extent, we can allow counsel and the governor to meet the witness prior to the testing so that to, to providing her testimony so that they are able to know who the witness is. That application, Mr. Speaker, sir, is made pursuant to Rule 28 of uh, third schedule. The second application, Mr. Speaker, sir, is that on Saturday at around 6.45, we were served with a response from the governor, and we noted that they have raised two preliminary issues one on whether this motion met the threshold that is being supported by two-thirds of the composition of the county assembly of Kiricho, and secondly of a purported order that barred the proceedings from taking place we have taken the liberty to prepare an affidavit on just those two issues we have filed that application we have served the same to my learned friend, Mr. Katwa, and we have also taken time to prepare enough copies for all the senators. We humbly seek that that affidavit, dated 13th of October 2024, be deemed as properly on record. That is all, Mr. Speaker, sir. I thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir, and honorable senators. Um, we, we would first of all want to take exception at the statement made by my colleague for the county assembly, saying as if it's a statement of fact that there was any sexual excesses. That is an issue for the courts and probably for this Senate. And so we take exceptions at the attempt to make it as if it's a statement of fact. For avoidance of doubt, we wish to say that there is no police report, there is no determination of that issue. Uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, I have three preliminary issues to request your audience on, uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, and the Senate. The first one, Mr. Speaker, sir, is that we did in fact file our documents and uh, a flash disk on Saturday the 12th. However, it turned out that they were not properly paginated and we have done a properly paginated set of documents and properly arranged uh, flash disk. We very kindly request and plead with you, Mr. Speaker, sir, and the Senate to allow us to replace the improperly paginated document with a properly paginated one. Uh, the contents and the substance remains the same, and the same was served on my colleagues. May I say also that I have had occasion to have a word with my colleagues for the county assembly and the general understanding is that subject to your ruling, Mr. Speaker, sir, and the members of the Senate, we are in agreement that we are not contesting the affidavit that they have just introduced, the one dated 13th of October 2024 that my, my learned friend has referred to, and in exchange they are not contesting the replacement of the wrongly paginated uh, bundle that we filed on Saturday, and we brought the corrected one on Sunday the 14th. Uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, other than that, I had indicated that uh, we propose to raise a preliminary objection uh, to these proceedings, and we flagged out three issues we wanted to argue. 
uh, Mr. Speaker, so I very kindly request for your audience on that application. Uh, the application to raise the preliminary objection is based on your rule, that, uh, rule 14 and Rule 30, Mr. Speaker, sir. Uh, on issues of materiality and uh, competence of the motion before you. I pray that you allow us audience on that preliminary objection. As my colleague has already indicated, they are aware of our preliminary objection and they are also ready to argue it. Uh, uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, as an aspect of that application, we are aware that Rule 14 says that if you are to allow us to raise the preliminary objection, the time within which we can argue that a preliminary objection is 30 minutes. Uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, our preliminary objection, at least in our estimation, is very substantial. There is a rider in that Rule 14 that you can uh, adjust the time within which it can be allowed. Uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, with that in mind, we would very much plead that you allow us uh, one hour to raise the preliminary objection as opposed to the 30 minutes. And if you must, Mr. Speaker, sir, we would pray that you don't, but if you must, we are prepared to forfeit part of the time subsequently allotted to us for purposes of cross-examination of the witnesses for the county assembly and for presenting our evidence the three hours thereafter. Mr. Speaker, sir, I rest my case there. We for, for yes, Mr. Speaker, sir. Uh, just exhaust the 30 minutes first. And if at the end of the 30 minutes you still need time, you will make that application. Don't make it at this juncture. Ah, so must you now proceed to raise your preliminary objection. Right away, my, Mr. Speaker, sir. Yes, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, sir. I, um, Mr. Speaker, sir, I trust you'll allow me audience on the issue of the protection of uh, the witness when it comes to that. Uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, the preliminary objection we wish to raise are three. The first one, Mr. Speaker, sir, is that we wish to draw the attention of this honorable plenary and the attention of you, Mr. Speaker, sir, that there is an order that was made on 3rd of October 2024, and which we serve to this uh, Honorable Senate, uh, both the Senate as an institution and the Speaker, and that order in itself uh, uh, had the effect of asking that the Senate should not uh, discuss this uh, impeachment until the court has uh, uh, expressed itself. Uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, in the face of that order which was duly served, we would very much pray that you consider uh, standing down this impeachment until the court has uh, entertained and determined that issue. Uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, the substance of that, uh, uh, we have failed the pagination of the case that is filed in Kericho. And um, uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, we serve to you with the, both the petition and the application and the order. And for that reason then, Mr. Speaker, sir, as a first preliminary issue, we pray for two things, that you do consider standing down this impeachment in, face, in the face of that order. And secondly, uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, that uh, uh, we... Mr. Speaker, sir, the second preliminary objection that I wish to raise is that uh, it is our argument that this impeachment is not Council, Yes, Mr. Speaker, sir. Uh, or whatever you're saying is contained in your bundle. Yes, Mr. Speaker, you sir. You can help the senators by referring to the bundle and the pages. Yes, Mr. Speaker, So that you can flow with them. Mr. Speaker, sir, the bundle and the order that I'm referring to is at page 387 of our panel, it relates to Kericho Constitutional Petition Number E-011 of 2024. Dr. Eric Mutai, as County Assembly of Kericho, the Speaker County Assembly, uh, Honorable Rogon, the mover of the motion, the Senate, and the Speaker. And the order is at page 387 to 388. Mr. Speaker, sir, I... Uh, yes, volume two, I, my apologies. Council, uh, talk closer to the microphone so that uh, the Senators can... Uh, hear you. Honorable Senators, I am referring to volume 2, page 387 to page 5, 
14, which contains the filings in Kericho High Court, Kericho Petition Number E011 of 2024, Dr. Eric Mutai, first as the County Assembly of Kericho, the Speaker of Kericho County, uh, Honorable Rogoin, uh, the Senate as fourth respondent, and the Speaker as the fifth respondent, and the order is at page 387 to 388, and it states at paragraph 5 that pending in the party's hearing of the motion dated 2nd of October, an order is issued to restrain the Senate and the Speaker from receiving or acting or presenting to the plenary of the Senate or allowing for debate the Senate, uh, allowing for debate at the Senate. No, honorable senators. Can the council be heard in silence, please? 